Let's get into it here. Bitcoin yesterday, impressive move to the upside. We find ourselves back above the key level of 69,200. Now, for me, that level only matters now on a weekly close. So we're going to watch Sunday night. Come Sunday night, where do we close? Do we close above 69.2? Now, having said that, where are your levels here? Well, clearly, we have a couple pivot points to look at. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. In this video, Gareth will share his insights on Bitcoin's impressive move. Bitcoin has made an impressive move to the upside, finding itself back above the key level of 69,200. But will it hold this level on a weekly close? Double top resistance. With a double top just below 74,000, will this short-term resistance be broken? The next big move. After the recent down move, is this the pivot point for the next big move up? Watching the trend line. The trend line has been tagged over and over again, indicating major support. But can this support be broken? Let's join Gareth in this interview about these topics and more. So first thing to look at here is you can see that we have a double top. So double top will short term be resistance. That's just below 74,000, around 73.7, I think, 73.8. That's going to be short term resistance. All right. Aside from that, what we're really trying to figure out here is after this down move, is that the end of it? All right. Is that the pivot point that now catal is the catalyst for the next big move up? Now, again, I'm, a, I'm an optimist, and overall, I do believe that we'll see Bitcoin eventually continue higher, but I'm much more of a prove-it-to-me versus a dreamer, right? And what I mean by that is you got to just really be aware of what you're looking at. Now, in terms of chart action, I would continue to be net neutral to positive on price action. The one thing that would scare me on Bitcoin uh, that we were going to get a corrective move back to, let's say, 50000 or so is if this trend line breaks. So watch this like a hawk, right? Pivot low here, and you just connect it to this low, right? What happened is we pulled back here, and we hit it right there, and we shot right back up. Then look at how we pulled back again, and we hit this line. The fact that this line is getting tagged over and over again tells me it's major support. However, can support be broken? Yes, and that would be the one thing that if you're a bull here, you do not want to see. Aside from that, Price action's pretty good. I'm impressed with the price action the last couple days, frankly, especially on Sunday. There was no volume there. Price went up pretty significantly. And you might say, well, there was no volume there. Why is that impressive? Well, because it, it actually held. The price action held the next day on Monday, yesterday, and actually moved even higher. A lot of times when you get a pop on light volume, the next day it comes right back in because there was really not a lot of buyers there. In this case, the buyers held strong. So you got to be giving credit there. So we know our support level here. We know our resistance level right up here. These are your two points to watch, right? Very clearly, those are your two pivot points to watch on Bitcoin. Bitcoin's price shows a quick recovery this week, with signs of renewed interest in Bitcoin ETF Bitcoin prices closed above $70,000, a key victory for the bulls. This week, the 37X wallet, previously the fifth largest Bitcoin wallet, was reactivated after being dormant since 2019. This move involved the transfer of a massive 94,504.03 Bitcoin into three separate addresses. One of these recipient wallets has now become the sixth largest Bitcoin holder, indicating a significant change in the ranking of top addresses. Next up, let's take a look. Here we have Solana. Solana's pushing up again. Now, again, on Solana, there's a couple points to watch, but I'll show you the most important support level. This would be a level where I would buy like crazy if it fell to this, assuming it wasn't on bad news or anything weird, right? But if we look at this, I love when two levels coexist together, right? It's it's basically, it's like you have one floor and then right there you have another floor. It's like double the protection. Doesn't mean it can't break, by the way, but overall, the probabilities are that it holds better. High pivot. Draw that line across. You can see price got above, it chopped, and then ripped higher. And look at this lower trend line here, right here, right through here, here, and here. And look at that zone right there. So essentially 125, 124, if price ever rolls over here, 
and comes down here, that is going to be an epic level of support. Now, in terms of resistance, same thing. Your high pivot here, which is, I think, around 210, that is your resistance level on Solana. We'll keep an eye on that. Solana's push. Solana is pushing up again. But what are the key points to watch? Solana has taken the lead in weekly stablecoin transfer volume, outpacing Ethereum due to increased investor interest fueled by yield opportunities, airdrops, and the popularity of meme coins. Data from blockchain analytics platform Artemis shows that Solana has overtaken Ethereum as the leading blockchain in weekly stablecoin transfer volume. Solana reported an impressive $364.7 billion in weekly stablecoin transfer volume, significantly more than Ethereum's $152.99 billion. Other notable chains like Tron and BNB Chain follow with volumes of $100 and $1.57 billion and $22.75 billion, respectively. Next up, we look at gold here, guys. And again, gold is pushing up. Uh, gold continues to look good, considering the dollar has been as strong as it has. you got to be impressed that gold just doesn't go down much. I mean, yeah, it reversed a couple days ago last week, but it never really went down. It's just kind of going sideways. In fact, you could argue that you're just kind of doing this, which if we look at that, what type of pattern is that, folks? That's your little flag pattern, right? They're going to put some bunch of stars in there and so on and so forth. So there's your bull flag continuing. We break above this and have daily closes up here. This should continue up. Now, remember, I had that inverse head and shoulder pattern that dictated where my target, my longer term target was going to be. Flipping to the weekly chart here, just so I get a bigger view, we simply look at this, right? Okay, there's your inverse head and shoulders, right? Here's a shoulder, here's your head, and here's a shoulder. There's your breakout. And what you can do here, and this is a method that we've developed, is that you ultimately take this low, you shoot a line right up to the neckline. That distance should be replicated upon the breakout. And again, that takes us to about a 2500 I think it was around a $2,540 target on gold. And if you look historically, that's around, it takes about 12 to 14 months to achieve it. Generally, if you map out historical breakouts on gold, where it tops out, it's usually 12 to 14 months. So that's actually a pretty good move. That's almost a 25% move on the price of gold there in the next 12 months, let's say. Gold's bull flag. Gold continues to look good, forming a bull flag pattern. But will it break above and continue up? Just a couple headlines out there today. Tesla jumps on news that the company plans to offer a one-month free trial of its full self-driving cars, uh, car systems. Uh, the key resistance levels here today, and this is more for day trading, 183 and 188. So again, those are the levels. I isolated them down on the charts. I'll show you in just a few minutes how I got those levels. But those will be levels that I'll be watching in my live trading room today with my other traders as we look to profit up on the ups and downs in the market. Next up, Krispy Kreme. I'm sure we all enjoy a good Krispy Kreme donut here and there. Jumps 21% after their donuts will be sold at McDonald's. So again, that's very positive news. Gets their brand out there and in many, many stores across the world. Reddit jumps 10% on low shares, all allowing for short squeezes. Now, this is something I want to talk about. When you get an IPO, what happens is when the, the company goes public and Reddit just went public late last week, there are only like literally a million or a couple million shares that are basically sold to the public. The rest are locked up for insiders, and the insiders have those, and they have a six-month, usually I should say, a six-month lockup before they can start selling. And so what happens is when you have such a low float of shares, the price can be very, very volatile. In general, in bull market atmospheres like we are in right now in the markets, you get big moves to the upside. So for instance, we see Reddit up another 10% today. I think it was up like 20% yesterday. But again, that happens because there's not a lot of supply and it's conducive to seeing short squeezes. We saw this on Arm Holdings just a few months ago on that when it's a semiconductor stock and we saw the big pops there. Now the lockup has ended for that and you're starting to see more shares being unloaded to the public. So again, just be aware that you have to be careful here. This is not a fundamental reason why the stock is going up. It's usually what we call a short squeeze or due to lack of supply. Lastly, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg selling another $39 million in shares. He's been unloading and unloading and unloading. 
We've, saw, we've seen Benioff unloading, uh, Bezos unloading. So this is not stopping, guys. And I want to be clear on this. I try to bring you stuff that you're not going to hear in the mainstream media. But again, we are seeing some of the biggest insiders unload hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in shares. Bezos is one of those that has done billions of dollars. But again, that to me is something I don't like to see. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.